Media reports of a noxious weed called giant hogweed have been causing concern among Michiganders about plants on their property. But is the problem with giant hogweed widespread? Hogweed is geographically widely distributed in Michigan. We know that it occurs from Detroit to the western upper peninsula. But within that range, we believe that hogweed is in fact quite rare. In about 10 years of tracking giant hogweed, we've uh, only found about 60 different locations in the whole state, which is really pretty sparse. Phillips says that most of the specimens that are submitted to the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development or Michigan State University's plant diagnostic labs are not actually giant hogweed. This year, uh, the hogweed calls started coming in about a month ago, and within this last month, we've had about 250 reports, five for positive for hogweed. So that's about 2%. One reason for the large number of erroneous reports is that there are a couple of plants that have similar characteristics. We have here a cow parsnip. It's in the same genus, close relative to giant hogweed. One difference is the size. Giant hogweed is usually two to three times the size of this plant in virtually every aspect. Also, these clusters of flowers, these umbels, uh, would again be two or three times the size. The stem of this plant, which is green, on giant hogweed, would be spattered with purple. Not a solid, even purple, but an uneven, sort of like you took paint on a popsicle stick and spattered the stem. The leaves here, which are about three feet long and a foot and a half wide on giant hogweed, would be four to seven feet long and two to three feet wide. Another look-alike plant has an almost heavenly name. Angelica atropurpurea, wild purple stem celery. And again, these stems are evenly purple. They are not splotched, they are not marked. They are an even purple color. The angelica has doubly pinnate compound leaves. That is, they are produced in little discrete leaflets. They are not a giant sawtoothed arrangement like you see in the cow parsnip and in the and in the hogweed. And when you look at these flowers, these are almost spherical umbels, which makes them a little bit unusual. They are not the huge flat-topped umbels or gently uh, convex umbels that you see in giant hogweed. But what should people do if they suspect they might have giant hogweed on their property? Phillips says, first, stay calm and think. I would suggest that they first confirm the identification, research it online, look at the difference between hogweed and its close look-alikes like cow parsnip and angelica. The best route to have that confirmed is to take a good series of digital photographs of the whole plant and of close-ups of the leaves, the flower, the stem, and then email those to the Department of Agriculture or to the MSU Plant Diagnostic Clinic. Giant hogweed will cause a reaction similar to an allergy if you get the sap anywhere on your body, and it can be particularly dangerous to the area near the eyes. The toxins in giant hogweed are activated by the ultraviolet rays of the sun. If at any time you are exposed to the sap of a giant hogweed plant, cover the exposed area and get out of the sun. Be sure to keep your hands away from your face and eyes. Once indoors, you can wash the sap off using soap and water. After washing the exposed area, it should remain covered and out of the sun for at least 48 hours. The toxins will wear off gradually during that period. It's also a good idea, though, to seek the advice of a medical professional for follow-up care. If you find you have giant hogweed and you want to remove it, you may want to contact a landscape professional. If you decide to remove it yourself, be sure to take appropriate precautions to prevent exposure to its sap. Wear protective coveralls, rubber gloves, eye protection, and sturdy shoes. Disposable clothing, footwear, and eyewear is a good option. Do not use mechanical means such as mowers or weed whackers. Their high-speed action will only end up spreading the sap further. Plants can be put into heavy-duty garbage bags. Small seedlings may be controlled with one or two applications of a herbicide containing glyphosate. Mature plants will require multiple applications. Reapplication may be needed for several seasons. When using any chemical controls, always read and follow label directions. On the campus of Michigan State University, I'm Steve Evans reporting.